First, we have a big problem. We cannot make the images smaller, but it's a big subject, so you get big pictures, and you have to visualize the missing corners yourself. Sorry about that. But I think it's not a big problem. So, uh, this subject, uh, in the beginning I had some problem where to start. So I decided I go as far back as possible. So, in the beginning it is said there was nothing. Not even time. Which is a contradiction, because if there is no time, there is no beginning. At that, let's say, time, there was God playing with himself. <laughs> this was a bit boring in the long range. So he tried to find out about the letters on his t-shirt. And he found out this means geometry, omnipotency, and divinity. If it is said, I have to go to action. I have to tell you in between, I'm an Austrian, I practice English only one week a year, so be patient with my simple English. So God chose uh, to take action and started with the Big Bang. Well, you know, before the Big Bang, all was perfect unity and uh, with the Big Bang, the whole geometrical thing started also. I have to make it short. Uh, he created man. And we jumped 20 billion years to now. And um, <laughs> then he thought, I should have, I should have a look what's going on in these uh, low dimensions and he found a big mess. Even the name God was not, uh, had not the same meaning than before. It was gravity, old age and duality. So the people have been frustrated so he thought uh, I guess that can't go on furthermore in this way. So he went into Earth himself and looked around about the cycles the evolution was in and found, well, there is a big cycle ending now. I could bring uh, at least some of my people home, but how to do this? They lost every contact with me, so I must find uh, a new way to show them the way back. So he decided, let the old Earth go and let's build a new one. But uh, how to do this? Uh, uh, he has a big bookshelf at home and also one book of Brothers Grimm with an interesting fairy tale. He read a bit within and uh, maybe you don't know this uh, German fairy tale. Uh, two young kids uh, had poor parents living in the woods and uh, the parents decided we cannot feed them anymore let's go with them in the woods, let them alone and, uh, and leave them there. But uh, the, the young son heard it and uh, had an idea to fill his pocket with little stones and throw them along the way while they are going into the wood to find a way home again. So and this was uh, uh, the part of the fairy tale where God said, oh, that's a good idea. I will uh, plaster the way for, the, for mankind with uh, specific uh, designs as a remembrance. The whole universe is sacred geometry. So why not put uh, specific designs for remembering as a, as a sort of resonance um, logos, yes. So we have, to, uh, I show you in the meantime, uh, nature is full of sacred geometry, minerals and uh, plants and animals, everything is designed by sacred geometry. 
also the human being. It starts uh, at the, the birthing process, so the, the, the creation, the fertilization, everything is uh, based on sacred geometry. So, in fact, the human being has all this uh, creation wisdom within himself, also he has forgotten it, but there must be a way to remember him. And the best would be to, uh, on the way back, to put, um, um, to plaster his way with um, designs to awaken him. This was the idea of God. So, in fact, he created the crop circles as a steering wheel for the way home. Then he started uh, to pouring down a lot of designs, and this was hard work, so he needed some assistance. And um, they do this work now. But all this uh, did not start uh, the last decades. Obviously, uh, there have been several evolutionary uh, leaps uh, during the development of mankind. And it seems that uh, crop circles appeared long, long before in the ancient past also. Maybe like this. Simple circles uh, and our forefathers have been wondering what said and uh, possibly say uh, brought stones to these circles and this became meeting points, ritual places. It is a fact that a lot of cave paintings and, and stone uh, etchings are existing which remind us a lot uh, to, on the crop circle designs. Even if you uh, measure multiple uh, stone circles, uh, they seem to have uh, incorporated uh, sacred geometry, which our forefathers, um, I'm sure, did not know. So it seems that um, there happened something which they, well, wanted to fix with stones, and uh, that's the reason why there is hidden geometric um, design inside. Also, there are big stone circles like in uh, at the Golan Heights in Israel is a real big stone circle with also geometric design, you know Stonehenge, you know all. But there's all over the world, uh, in, uh, at the bottom you see uh, cave paintings of New Mexico, on the left Australia, in the middle spacemen from Italy on the left side, a lot of UFO paintings in a very old cave in Italy. Well, you know some of these stone um, designs which you can find again also in the last decade as crop circles. There's really a lot of these things you can find all over the globe. It started slowly to grow to complex designs, spirals, and for example, the first uh, major step was uh, the Vesica Pisces, which is um, a simple design which, with a lot of information in it. Even the, the angle of the Great Pyramid is hidden in the Vesica Pisces. So, God started to choose more and more um, complex designs to remember his people about their way home. Even in the cosmos, in the universe, in the, within the stars, you can find sacred geometry directly or indirectly. So the so-called platonic solids nested are here. Uh, all the suns you can see in the night, so five, six thousand stars, they are not uh, uh, splattered around by chance. They all have specific positions and make uh, a, a really huge sacred geometry grid, which we only partly understand at the moment. It all started with the Vesica Pisces. Even the flower of life is hidden within. Flower of life, uh, much of you know, is the basic grid of the universe, which is even found in old Egypt in the, at the temple of Abydos on a granite pillar. 
you can see it at least 6,000 years old and it's within a lot of crop circles. I think it's about 100, uh, dozens uh, where you can see it directly and hundreds which have uh, hidden um, flower of life designs. Even Leonardo da Vinci studied it a lot, uh, knowing that this goes deep into the core of, of life. And all over the world you can find a uh, reminiscence of the flower of life. Here are some more crop circles with flower of life designs. Uh, last year one appeared which has quite the same design uh, of a stone plate found in Ephesus. So it became more and more complex and uh, the flower of life uh, has within its hidden parts a lot of sub-designs. Even the, the runes have their origin from that uh, grid we call flower of life. In German, Germany, you, we found some crop circles which have runes aside, maybe as a signature or so. But the most important thing about the flower of life is the Great Pyramid angle is hidden within the flower of life grid. Also, it's, uh, which I told you, it's within the Vesica Pisces. And uh, the flower of life, uh, you see it flat here, but in fact, it's it's a ball, it's a 3D object, uh, and um, it's the female uh, grid, light grid, uh, on which all life is based, which has a counterpart, which we have been shown in this Egyptian crop circle in the, uh, I forgot the name of the, in the, what's the name of this? beetle, scarab. The, the, in the wings of the scarab there is a hidden information about this whole structure. It is the simplest method to construct uh, the Great Pyramid. You make one big circle and put 24 circles inside this big circle and uh, use the first middle point of a, of a small circle and the third the second and the fourth and so on and opposite and you have the pyramid grid which was not known before this scarab crop circle. So there's uh, very useful information inside and this is the male counterpart to the flower of life to the female grid. Here you can see the uh, graphic uh, decoding. Well there are a lot more ancient um, bridges, uh, bridges to ancient knowledge within crop circles. For example, the yin-yang and uh, the I Ching, which is rooted in an old legend. The Chinese emperor Fu Si uh, met a giant turtle and on his shield there have been cracks and he could, uh, uh, he was, um, he could find out the I Ching on the, on the cracks of this turtle. This is the saying. And also we had some in the, in the early times of crop circles, we got some abstract turtles. And uh, some years ago, or was it last year, we got this yin yang and an abstract I Ching um, circle around. Uh, the interesting thing is, um, in an old Chinese language, one uh, line was um, the sign for sky, two lines for for earth, and three for the lake. And these three uh, lines all together mean tranquility. And the yin yang and the I Ching tranquility with the pyramid hidden inside, so it's a perfect design of uh, perfect tranquility. We got a lot of I Ching designs, and uh, not I Ching, uh, Yin Yang designs, which I show here around. A very interesting thing is, we got this double Yin Yang. If you draw one horizontally and 
one vertically and uh, put them one over the other, you get, get a lot of hidden pyramids here also. So the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, the angle of 21 degrees, 21 minutes, seemingly is everywhere. We found it hundreds of times. So, and the yin-yang designs became more complex. This year, we even got the special yin-yang where the lay of the, of the stalks even shows the yin-yang. This design obviously shows, at least for me, shows the evolution of, of cell structures. Also a lot of pyramids and so let's go back again. The hexagram is a very, very old design, much older than the flag of Israel. It has at least, it had, has nothing to do with it. It's a, a, a primal uh, structure of the universe. Also this we got shown um, a lot of times and it's in, in simple triangles and complex triangles in 3D. This is an American crop circle uh, 10 years ago. So we have hundreds of hexagrammatic designs and triangle designs. The next step then is uh, squares or cubes. We got also a lot of them. A very important one is this uh, 3D design which obviously depicts uh, the temple of Abydos and here on one of these pillars is uh, the flower of life which I showed you in the beginning. So and the cubes also became complex. This uh, design uh, on Sugar Hill, the sugar cubes. This is a very interesting design. I, I would need a whole lecture to explain this. Uh, from this design I even can prove that there must be a hidden chamber in the pyramid which has not been found till today and um, well I should write a book about it if I have some time. Well this year we got a lot of cubes. Uh, interesting is uh, the Nazca uh, um, depictions in Nazca, Peru, the Nazca lines, they have also geometric uh, designs which are not well known and they correspond with crop circles, at least two crop circles. One shows exactly a Nazca, Nazca design and the second one shows it apart. So here this is a, a photograph of Nazca lines. This is about 500 meters. I, I made it green to, to enhance it because you nearly can't see it. Most well known are the animal depictions of the Nazca um, area and especially the hummingbird which we all know appeared in the fields and the interesting thing, the very interesting thing which uh, makes a connection to Nazca is the eye of the hummingbird was not uh, standing stalks but it was uh, hollow earth, it was, um, I don't know the word, you know, you see what I mean. Um, and uh, so this energy is obviously can be very powerful that it can also uh, put designs deep into the earth like it is done in the Nazca plains where um, the stones are put away so that you can see the designs from above. The cube um, is a platonic solid, the, the triangle in 3D it's also a platonic solid and then comes, comes the octahedron. We also got the octahedron as a fold-up pattern some 10 years ago into the field. So the platonic solids must be very important. Even uh, Johannes Kepler studied them a lot. He found out that the nested platonic solids, solids have something to do with the planetary orbs. Today we know that we are all built from platonic solids. It's the basic building blocks of the universe, so the Lego of God, we can say. 
And it's also not a new thing. We have uh, found uh, in Etruscan graves uh, platonic solids made from stone, and uh, they are they are on the shelf in in, in London in the Ashmolean Museum. And uh, uh, below you see a modern depiction. Um, platonic solids are special bodies, and there are on, only five of them existing. If you put a sphere around all these five platonic solids, the the points of the platonic solids um, reach the sphere. If you put a sphere inside these this bodies, this, the surface is uh, <coughs> reach the, the sphere. So it is only possible with these five uh, bodies. That's the reason why I, they are so important. The next thing why there is a big uh, bridge to ancient times. Uh, from the crop circles is uh, they are more and more put into the fields near ancient places and this year even in geometric uh, formations and uh, also one reason why it uh, has enough to do with ancient times is that around Avebury and Stonehenge and that, that this is the area where all these um, designs mostly appear even uh, if where itself has been depicted roughly about I think 15 years ago. Then we have a lot of symbols, age-old symbols, which are also found in crop circles and far, far back in our history. For example, the Ouroboros, the snake which bites itself into the hmm, tail, yes. <laughs> And uh, we could found this also several times in crop circles. It's a, a symbol of wholeness. Also the, the eight uh, symbol of infinity. We got several eights also this year. It's also very old and uh, deep in, uh, rooted within our consciousness. There are two sorts of symbols. The ones which uh, mankind developed over the ages, this is rooted in our subconscious, and there are still deeper rooted uh, symbols, which are sacred geometry symbols. We, they are rooted in our uh, unconscious. So, uh, all what God is, is doing is he he's trying a sort of resonance therapy with mankind. For example, the, the cross, uh, if it has the right uh, proportions, um, resonates in a special frequency which should us awake. Or the, the all-seeing eye of God, this is not uh, uh, primarily a, uh, um, it's an age-old symbol, not only from the Illuminati, which uh, uh, have stolen this symbol, it's much, much older. For example, the, the, the grave of Jesus, which was found uh, only some years ago, has uh, this depiction, also ge geometrically perfectly constructed. And uh, at the time of Jesus, um, the, the coffins have been, have looked like this and had um, flower of life designs. So they knew that it's a sort of resurrection symbol. The next very important um, thing is the so-called Ark of the Covenant, which um, is a bridge to the higher realms. And also this we got in the crops with a fantastic design. It looks quite simple, but it has all necessary information to show us even how it, uh, how it works. And it fits totally into the uh, sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid. Well, then this is called Antakarana. This is in, in the Reiki area, a very important symbol. The butterfly is a primal symbol for transformation because the caterpillar um, becomes this beautiful 
animal and um, e even uh, our science doesn't know what happens when the caterpillar uh, makes this puppet, what's, what's really going on inside is not really known, but uh, on a society level this is going on also at the moment and science doesn't know what's going on really at the moment. So, we have also African designs, this uh, picture has some defect, uh, sorry. We have South American designs, uh, God tries everything to let us remember from where we are coming. Kabbalistic designs, um, even the seven-armed um, leuchter. Mm -hmm. Yes, and an oil lamp. Then a uh, very interesting happening was in Germany, middle Germany, 1991. Some of you will know it. Uh, there have been found three metal plates within the main circles. And the metal plates had the same design as the whole crop circle. And one was in pure gold, pure silver and bronze. And uh, the silver was such pure that uh, it is not possible to, to produce it on, on earth now. The gold plate has been stolen and uh, the bronze plate is also existing now. It has, it has a sort of Nordic design from the Vikings, so it's not really de uh, decoded now. The next major symbol is the goddess symbol, uh, which has some interesting detail. This sort of navel, if you put a great pyramid inside, then the navel is exactly at the place of the queen's chamber. Such interesting details are hidden in, in the things we get into the field. One uh, simple German crop circle is also very interesting. If you try from the bad picture to, to get the whole design, then you find out it's a special version of the Knight Templar cross. And if you search further, you find the special design is because it has the hidden pyramids inside. Then we get um, mathematical designs. Or Giordano Bruno has developed a, a philosophy based on geometric, on sacred geometry. And some of his drawings have been presented in the fields one to one. The Freemasons, <coughs> the pure Freemasons, so there are a lot of others uh, nowadays. Uh, the original roots of the Freemasonry is also partly shown in crop circles, for example, in this, what we call spaceships, where we have the, the logo of the Freemasons hidden. In India, they knew since long times about the power of geometry. This is a side of a temple and the symbol for the highest frequency, the so-called Om, is in, in each area in India they write it a bit different and we got it as a crop circle too. This is a very interesting crop circle because if you change it 90 degree then you can find uh, a lot of hidden information even the ankle of the Great Pyramid is hidden inside. So we got uh, these are the syllables of, of um, the chakras, so it has to do with sound and frequency. And uh, you know, we know all if we meditate deeply on specific crop circles that we change our frequency. We, there are existing old depictions of our chakra systems. We got the new one, uh, and we got the new design. The old Indian people uh, in, the, in the Vedas and so on, they knew about the power of yantras. Yantras are, there is an enormous collection of geometrical designs which are used for specific reasons with specific frequencies. This has a lot to do with crop circles and the next symbol, very important, is the phoenix symbol. It's known all over the world. 
Also this we got a scrub circle, it was long, the logo of our group, of our German or Austrian research group, but now we got the new crops, uh, Phoenix, so we choose the new one. This one of last year has, has a lot of information inside in the, in the feathers, the pyramid, the obelisk, and so on, and, and the, the bark of the sun, and much more. It's a very, very old uh, image which obviously comes from solar eclipses uh, where you can see emanations of the sun which look like wings and uh, well all these uh, Egyptian looking uh, designs had, uh, has, have the pyramid designed much more in the back especially interesting are the obelisks obelisks have on the top a small pyramid and we got the obelisk design in 3D. Here you can see obelisk uh, with, the, with the top put into the earth. And um, I did not believe what I thought I, I could see, so I built it by cardboard. This is the 3D, 3D version. And the most interesting thing is if you make an axis through any of these obelisks, then this axis shows the angle of the Great Pyramid. So there are 12 pyramids on the tops which make a, a sun and 12 hidden pyramids outside. So in this design there are 24 pyramids and you cannot see anyone. Let's go to this year. It started with a very interesting design which also would need half a, an hour for for lecturing about it. A lot of pyramids and other angles, it's, it's really an educational design. The most interesting thing is it shows about uh, golden section pyramids. There are two ways to build them. Uh, if you take spheres uh, with the proportional steps of uh, the golden section, then you get uh, 75 degrees. If you use cubes and put one above the other the, in, in golden section proportion, then you get 20, 72 degrees. Interestingly, in old Egypt, in Nubia, they had such sort of pyramids. And today, the Russians are experimenting a lot with these designs and have uh, enormous success uh, in, in different reasons. Uh, also, the Rus Russian aus astronauts are uh, training in these pyramids. They have built about two dozen, two dozen of them up to 44 meters. So the next design we got this year, uh, I call it Rotor, Rotor uh, was directly opposite Stonehenge. And the very interesting thing is, if you overlay it, and then uh, the, the secondary circles are directly over this uh, smaller mounds uh, which exist since long at Stonehenge. The next inter interesting thing is it's directly uh, oriented to the center of Stonehenge and Stonehenge itself is a fractal flower of life design and uh, if you triple triple this uh, rotor plate, then it uh, lasts exactly over the center of Stonehenge. You also get pyramids and so on. It has a lot of information. In fact, it shows uh, the energy vortex over Stonehenge. And um, you, uh, this is a, a picture, uh, a uh, Kirlian picture, where you can see uh, when uh, the pyramid energy, when a pyramid is full of energy, then the energy starts to uh, come out of the top. And um, seemingly in Stonehenge it works the same. Then we got this keyhole, which has also a lot of interesting uh, geometry. It's, it's so much filled with geometries that I cannot show you 
everything, only to give you an idea, triple vesica pisces. And uh, the interesting, most interesting thing is if you put the, the eyeballs in the lower corners, then you, know, you have an exact, uh, equilateral triangle, and then you have the third eye here. So it's definitely meant to be a keyhole to look into another dimension. So, and we have uh, these small circles, they are divided by 16.4 degrees, and uh, there is uh, far away from the keyhole a second uh, crop design, uh, only a circle. Uh, it seemingly should be an eyeball, and it's also in the angle of 16.4 degrees uh, located. So the whole thing obviously means look it through this keyhole with your third eye, with one eye into the higher dimensions, then you uh, will become a bit wiser. <laughs> so, in fact, we get s some stories told uh, via crop circles. It started with, okay, from the center of the galaxy, we will get uh, energies, energies are pouring out uh, to our sun, to, to the planet Earth and all our other planets. This energy is uh, taking the way of this um, double vortex, which I showed before. And if you look through this uh, dense layer of reality into the more subtle layers, then uh, there are uh, formulas working uh, which are a bit different than for the dense world. So we got uh, the formula, the so-called Euler world formula, which um, originally uh, is written a bit different, but uh, Mr. Euler has developed this formula 200 years ago, and now we have quantum physics. So the, I don't know the English word, the Planck Wirkungsquantum with the letter H is included into the formula. Obviously, this formula work is for uh, higher realms, the right one. Then we got um, the next formula, which has to do with the building blocks of the universe, where it's phi, the golden, golden section number, which we also got in the field. There is, uh, there appeared one moment, there is a a heart formed by rose bushes in this field. And here it is. And the position of the crop circle is even uh, related to the golden section. And uh, the phi formula has also to do with the heartbeat. That's the reason why the heart is nearby. Because if you are healthy, uh, your heart uh, is beating in, in the phi proportions. So the next one we got, which has also to do with uh, the beginning of creation, this is obviously an abstract design of a galaxy, of a special galaxy. And it, ha it has enormous much uh, geometrical information. So the sort how galaxies develop is, is this way or this way, and I don't know the English word, Balkan galaxy, it's called, uh, it has two uh, special parts, and uh, it seems that our galaxy more looks like this than it was depicted since long. Even in infrared photography, you can see, if you have this sort of galaxy, three main parts which are shown also here. Then let's go to some international crop circles. In Italy, a very interesting one appeared, which also has some um, very profound information inside. Have a special look onto these little circles and the dots inside. If you count them, you get an ASCII code number, and if you translate the ASCII code number, you get the famous Einstein formula. 
Einstein would be, have been amazed about this. And the most interesting thing is there is a, a second field you can see uh, with screen crop. And the limit or the, the tram lines are exactly the, in the pyramid angle. Some weeks ago, in near, near Munich, Germany, also a very interesting crop circle appeared. It looks quite simple, but this is the coded information inside. You have to uh, look layer for layer uh, on it to, to get the whole information. But the most interesting is if you rotate nine pyramids around this uh, design and uh, enhance one, and uh, there are the so-called air shafts of the pyramid. If you prolong them, all air shafts meet at crossing points of the rotating pyramids. Also, the air shafts don't start from the exact middle. Every uh, crossing uh, goes to an air shaft. So this seems to prove that the air shafts have an energetical function while the planet rotates with the pyramid. So these are the, the, some depictions of the air shafts. Till today it's not really known what uh, use the air shafts had, but this uh, German crop circle seems to show it at least a bit. We have the South American and Yucatan, Mexico, uh, depiction of Kukulkan and Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, here the depiction of the pyramid of Chichen Itza. This is uh, especially interesting because we, it's uh, part of the Mayan philosophy and we are close to the ending of the big Mayan calendar circle, end of 2012. That's the reason why we get a lot of Mayan designs where uh, circle, cycle uh, wisdom is uh, implemented. Here is some more. Especially interesting is the, the feather crown. With, uh, here you can see the snout of Quetzalcoatl, uh, some stone depictions. So we have a, 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 this cosmic crossing of 2012 and there is a lot of uh, Mayan information. Very interesting is, this is a sort of comic of the Mayans which uh, was not destroyed by the Spanish people, in, uh, by the Spanish uh, conquistadors. So you can see the feather crown, you can see the third eye and the lotus flower and the hummingbird uh, sipping at the lotus flower and uh, he has a shield with this crossing and all these designs appeared in the in the fields. The, the meaning behind the feather crown is what the Buddhists uh, call thousand uh, leafed lotus is the, the when a person becomes enlightened it puts up the feather crown in this philosophy and here it is shown that when the Kundalini rises, uh, here it's uh, eating a, a man, so the physical dimension uh, is not, no more of importance. So, 2012 will be a very, very interesting time and we get a lot of Mayan information, pyramids inside everywhere, and uh, some strange information which we cannot directly translate. We could translate this part of, of the, this seems to be a sort of music instrument or whatever, but uh, the, this part obviously shows a tzikwarat, a, a step pyramid, or it's a, it's a sort of spiral pyramid, and the next part is a step pyramid from above, and uh, the, pure, uh, the energy coming down and the snake going back to this. This seems to depict that uh, cosmic energy is coming down. Uh, a step pyramid is a, it's a, it's a hill to communicate with God. Uh, the meaning of the word tzikurat is the same. 
So we come close to this uh, ending of this big cycle and uh, we got a wonderful information. This for me is the most important crop circle of all. This shows in an idealistic way the planetary position of 21st December of 2012. And, um, I'll give you the details a bit later. It appeared in a field near Avebury, close to the Avebury Stone Circle. And this is a, a bird's eye view. This is the, the Avebury Stone Circle. And if you project a big flower of life, then it sits perfectly inside. And the center of this flower of life is fractalized. And in the very center, here is the center of this um, planetary depiction, the, the crop circle which appeared. So uh, exactly to the meter, they positioned this field to be in the, in the right uh, grid position. What is of big interest, I could hold a five hour lecture only about this crop circle. What is very interesting are the symbols. There is a second big empty circle uh, close to the um, planetary circle. There are five symbols. This one you can nearly see. It's a diamond, a snake, a turtle, a spiral, and a uh, moon crescent. And obviously this is a wormhole where uh, some energy or intelligence from uh, wholeness, from oneness is going into duality. Here you can see it a bit better. Uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's too much. Uh, all these uh, logos have appeared in one or other way in the meantime. And the main, uh, the core information is in this crop circle, if you take Mars and connect it with Saturn and connect it with the Earth and with Neptune, you get the exact proportion of the Great Pyramid. And the Earth is the last stone of this pyramid. And Pluto and Mars and the center of the Sun make also one line in the same angle. In fact, in short, it says Pluto and Mars and Sun, is, if you study astrology, is a very, very powerful constellation, conjunction of Pluto, Mars and Sun. So this makes the sun giving energy and within a pyramid energy is always going upward through the top and this energy is going directly to planet earth which is the, the upper stone of this pyramid. In fact also the phoenix sits perfectly inside. Here is Jupiter which you cannot see here clearly. And what really is happening at that time, at least for all people who are open for it, there will be a light shower for everybody because um, this constellation uh, tells us it is a must that Earth will be cleansed by an enormous shower of light. So we are going faster and faster to this state and we will open up more and more. We will realize what the platonic solids, um, the meaning really is, and why they are always pyramids. If you are a god and uh, create things and build them with platonic solids, it will all fall apart if you don't have the pyramid angle and some more functions. The pyramid is the glue which holds everything together. That's why the pyramid is always involved. It goes down and uh, up to the, or down into the DNA and, and so on and all grids. Uh, so there is nothing possible without the Great Pyramids. That's the reason why it is such an important monument. And this new energy input will create uh, new emanations of uh, creation within this grid and uh, the human being will uh, more or less realize its um, godly roots and become homo cosmicus. And uh, this all with the help of intelligences which have all these 
uh, evolutionary steps behind them and they are ready to help us and they are, they are doing this. Um, there are only some structures which, which will not help us, they are not able to do it, but uh, this doesn't matter. We have help from friends all through all the universe and uh, the key to understand what's going on is sacred geometry which we get uh, as presents in the crop fields and when we understand this we can pull out the Excalibur and there is one uh, major thing happened two weeks ago it's this two crop circles I don't know uh, how much you know about it it's sort of uh, git guitar strings, 16, and a lot of pearls, but a different way um, positioned. If you look at both, they are positioned within a golden section grid. And the very interesting thing is, if you put one grid over the other, mirroring it, then you get this design. Look a bit uh, unsharp uh, onto this design. This is the one crop circle and the other, this is top on top, mirrored. Now I, I blur it for you and you see what picture is coming out now. And I tried to find out what is the, what is the basis of this picture and I found it is this picture which they abstracted into dots and this uh, uh, portrait of Jesus is a paranormal portrait. Some decades ago another photographer got the order to photograph the Shroud of Turin and he made some uh, close-ups of the head. He, he took seven pictures and uh, on these pictures are the eyes sort of, uh, you can see they are closed. And on the seventh picture Jesus opened the eyes and uh, within the laboratory the photographer uh, must have been very amazed. And this is definitely the picture, if you make it black and white, the dark regions, you can make a sort of back engineering. Use this picture, blur it, abstract it into dots and then you get the crop circle. So it's a paranormal photograph within a paranormal crop circle. Uh, promising us the second coming of Christ, which is the higher consciousness which we will all undergo when, if we are open end of 2012. And this is an overlay of the crop circle, uh, blurred picture and the original photograph. So we have again a big bridge to the time of Jesus and now, and this was what I wanted to tell you. Thank you. must find uh, a new way to show them the way back. So he decided, let the old earth go and let's build a new one. But uh, how to do this? Uh, uh, he has a big bookshelf at home and also one book of Brothers Grimm with an interesting fairy tale. He read a bit within and uh, Maybe you don't know this uh, German fairy tale. Uh, two young kids uh, had poor parents living in the woods and uh, the parents decided we cannot feed them anymore. Let's go with them in the woods, let them alone and, uh, and leave them there. 
but uh, the, the young son heard it and uh, had an idea to fill his pocket with little stones and throw them along the way while they are going into the wood to find a way home again. So and this was uh, uh, the part of the fairy tale where God said, oh, that's a good idea. I will uh, plaster the way for, the, for mankind with uh, specific uh, designs as a remembrance. The whole universe is sacred geometry. So why not put uh, specific uh, the last decades? Obviously, uh, there have been several evolutionary uh, leaps during the development of mankind. And it seems that uh, crop circles appeared long, long before in the ancient past also. Maybe like this. Simple circles uh, and our forefathers have been wondering what's that and uh, possibly say uh, brought stones to these circles and this became meeting points, ritual places. It is a fact that a lot of cave paintings and, and stone uh, etchings are existing, which remind us a lot uh, to, on the crop circle designs. Even if you uh, measure multiple uh, stone circles, uh, they seem to have uh, incorporated uh, sacred geometry, which our forefathers, um, I'm sure, did not know. So it seems that um, there happened something which they well, wanted to fix with stones, and uh, that's the reason why there is hidden geometric um, design inside. Also, there are big stone circles, like in, uh, at the Golan Heights in Israel, is a real big... First, we have a big problem. We cannot make the images smaller, but it's a big subject, so you get big pictures, and you have to visualize the missing corners yourself. Sorry about that. But I think it's not a big problem. So uh, this subject, uh, in the beginning, I had some problem where to start. So I decided I go as far back as possible. So in the beginning, it is said there was nothing, not even time, which is a contradiction, because if there is no time, there is no beginning. At that, let's say, time, there was God playing with himself. <laughs> this was a bit boring in the long range. So he tried to find out about the letters on his T-shirt. And he found out this means geometry, omnipotency, and divinity. If it is said, I have to go to action. I have to tell you in between, I'm an Austrian, I practice English only one week a year, so be patient with my simple English. So, Gothic designs for remembering as a, as a sort of resonance um, logos, yes. So we have, to, uh, I show you in the meantime, uh, nature is full of sacred geometry, minerals and uh, plants and animals. Everything is designed by sacred geometry. Also the human being. It starts uh, the, the birthing process, so the, the, the creation, the fertilization, everything is uh, based on sacred geometry. So. In fact, the human being has all this uh, creation wisdom within himself, although he has forgotten it, but there must be a way to remember him. And the best would be to, uh, on the way back to put, uh, um, to plaster his way with um, designs to awaken him. This was the idea of God. So in fact, he created the crop circles as a steering wheel for the way home. Then 
he started uh, to pouring down a lot of designs and this was, this was hard work so he needed some assistance and um, they do this work now but all this uh, did not start out choose uh, to take action and started with the big bang well you know before the big bang all was perfect unity and uh, with the big bang the whole geometrical thing started also i have to make it short uh, he created man we jump 20 billion years to now and um, Then he thought, I should, have, I should have a look what's going on in these uh, low dimensions. And he found a big mess. Even the name God was not, uh, had not the same meaning than before. It was gravity, old age, and duality. So the people have been frustrated. So he thought, uh, I guess that can't go on furthermore in this way. So he went into Earth himself and looked around about the cycles the evolution was in and found, well, there is a big cycle ending now. I could bring uh, at least some of my people home, but how to do this? They lost every contact with me, so I 